No. <laughs> Him and his wife spend many of their free hours traveling and um, checking out the Civil War site. So he's been kind enough to put this, this travel log together for us. So I'm going to turn this over to you. And I don't particularly need a podium or anything, but I, I, I wanted to, since this is Civil War Day, I thought we should start primarily talking about the Civil War. And there are uh, 10,500 military actions that took place during the Civil War in over 26 states, and I will now list them alphabetically. <laughs> you don't believe me? Okay. All right. Or maybe not. Uh, to save time, there are between 384 and 400 principal battle sites. Just a few stats about them before we get going. 43% of all Civil War sites are totally in private hands. If you want to visit them, you're going to have to talk to the property owner. Many will allow it, but Almost half are in private hands. 49% are partially public, partially private. That even applies to a big one like Gettysburg. Not all the battlefield is in public domain. 4% are wholly government owned. 19% are totally gone. You wanna go there? You can go there. There's nothing there to see. Most of the battlefields, for example, that William Tecumseh Sherman led in and around Atlanta, major, major confrontations. Yes, the sites are there, the battlefields are not. Atlanta grew over them all. There's lots of interesting information to be found about the battles that happened in that area, but if you're going to see a battlefield, save your time. Atlanta's not the place to go. However, that is just about as far out as Kennesaw Mountain is, and Kennesaw Mountain is the last major battle before the Atlanta battles prime, and it is a big, sprawling, much used park, used by the locals for hiking, for walking, also used for a lot of commuter traffic, so you don't want to get there too early. Sites are also rated by their importance. A equals de uh, decisive influence in the war. There are 45 of those. B are decisive influence in a campaign. There's 104 of those. C is an observable influence on a campaign, and D, limited. Of the top 250 fields, 50% are in good condition with mild development pressure. All the others are under huge development pressure and are being swallowed up at a phenomenal rate every day. Uh, if you don't know, there's an organization called the Civil War Trust Civil War preservation. I also talk a little bit about preservation because many of these fields are on their way out permanently. Uh, Civil War Trust is a little more than a decade and a half old and has raised all sorts of outrageous money. Uh, go online if you're interested, you can see, and most of their money is matched. So if you send them a dollar, they often match that about 16 times. Uh, they've even helped purchase uh, land in, in Gettysburg recently. Examples of battlefields, there are large ones and small ones. I'll just list you a few of the large ones. Gettysburg, Antietam, Fredericksburg, Manassas, Vicksburg, Harper's Ferry, Shiloh. No, that's okay. You can run. No, we're, we're going to go back to these. Don't try to keep up with me. Wilderness, Chancellorsville, Spotsylvania, Chickamauga, Franklin, Nashville. Small, and I mean small, Balls Bluff. It's going to kill you, but I actually have a, a little walking tour brochure of Ball's Bluff. Now, you can't see much of this, but you can tell it's not much of a map. There's a tiny road in, there's a little parking lot, and you can easily walk the whole thing in 15 minutes. You'll never find it, though. You've never seen such a housing development masking a battlefield in all your life. I passed it twice before I found a tiny sign to get in. It is manned by no one and was responsible for the death of one of the Lincoln's early friends and whose, uh, whose funeral was held shortly after Elmer Ellsworth's funeral in the White House. 
This was a botched thing, but I mean, the site is perfect. It's a little knoll. It's a rise on the south side of the Potomac River. Potomac River's fairly wide there. It has an island in the middle, but very steep banks. When the mismanaged recon mission of the Union ran into much stronger than expected opposition there, most of the Union deaths occurred as they were trying to escape by being shot down after dropping down this steep cliff, being picked off on the island, or drowning in the then swift running Potomac River. Monocacy is another little one, which has a much bigger brochure that I picked up. I was just there a couple weeks ago. It's a wonderful little place. And oftentimes, the smaller battlefields give you a better field, feel on what's going on than the big ones. Fort Monroe. Anybody into the Civil War knows that's where McClellan started his troops to accumulate before launching the Peninsula Campaign to go up and capture uh, Richmond. Fort Monroe was still largely there. Fort Monroe has, as a matter of fact, my wife used a couple pictures we took from there because that's where Jefferson Davis was initially imprisoned. It's a massive structure. It's really interesting there. Fort Donelson. That's early in the war, that's General Grant. Andersonville, a prison. Very, very interesting, and I'll talk, I gotta come back and talk more about Andersonville. Appomattox Courthouse, which actually has a battlefield attached to it. When I went, I had no idea it had a battlefield attached to it. It is a remarkably restored site, it really is. And Fort Sumter. I wanna include two other, um, Fort Henry, you want, remember Henry Donaldson? You can see Donaldson. But since the war, the, the dammed up rivers, we have a tendency to do that, right? You build dams. Well, one of the reasons that Grant could take Fort Henry so easily was because Fort Henry at the time was flooded partially by the spring water. Well, when they dammed this river, if you want to see Fort Henry, bring your scuba gear. It's underwater. It, it, and of course, then there's General Pope's first victory on island number 10 in the Mississippi. Of course, it's not there anymore. Now, and the Mississippi moved too, not only the island, so. Um, when you go, prepare. How do you want to prepare? National Park websites. They have all of this kind of information all over their websites. They're great. You want to bring kids? Or you don't want to, but have to. I just downloaded this one. This is kind of typical. This is from Antietam. This is pages of stuff, the sites for the kids, activities for the kids, materials you might pick up before you get there. I brought one sample of this. What was life like in the Civil War? I had it approved by my second oldest grandson, who's just entering the room right now. And my oldest grandson, who said, yep, that's appropriate. I find that interesting. <laughs> the worst thing you can do if you're traveling with kids is take them someplace where they're bored to death. Don't do it. If you go to a national park, they almost always have things that will appeal to them and who knows, maybe even to you. How did you like wearing a Civil War uniform, Alex? Remember when you fired the shots at Gettysburg and you killed the wall of the visitor center? I mean, you know, that was cool. In almost all Civil War battlefields, picnicking is available and encouraged. Bring water, though. Bring sunscreen if you're there during the good weather. And check for pest alerts. A few years ago, I brought back a, a, a friend with me. Um, or actually, it wasn't that much of a friend. The doctor that had to cut the tick out of me said, that's not a friend. And it was a Lyme disease bearing tick and I had to take uh, yeah, antibiotics for 10 days for that. Parks are usually open dawn to dusk, but the restrooms are few and far between, guys. Just the word to the wise. Visitor senators are usually open nine to five. There's almost always a short movie, don't skip it especially if you don't know the area. It, 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 they're usually short, but they're very, very informative. Uh, they almost always have museums. Going back to Andersonville, anybody who visits Andersonville who is also interested in firearms, 
skip actual walking the Andersonville part. You can spend most of the day in their extensive firearm museum. Never would have expected to find it there. So I would suggest if you're going and you don't know, see if the museum there specializes in anything. I was very surprised to find the firearm specialization in Andersonville. Andersonville, by the way, is very interesting. They've recreated a lot of it. And to see it once, you forever got the understanding. It's like my wife always had trouble understanding what the problem was with Harper's Ferry. And the minute she got there, she looked around, confluence of two rivers, and everything from Harper's Ferry is up. Even the town is up. She says, OK, I got it now. You're sitting in the bottom of a goldfish bowl. Yep. And there are several trails that you can climb. You can cross the one river next to the railroad bridge that the B&O Railroad used and still does and go up that steep mountain. My daughter who's leaving, her husband actually ran up that mountain. I could kill him. <laughs> Civil War people dragged cannon up it. I had trouble walking up it. They're completely crazy. <laughs> but it's fun. The only other thing you should do, uh, bring a camera. You'll remember it, and you'll remember it better than any picture you'll take. But bring one anyway. Um, phone. A lot of the auto stops in the bigger parks, you know, you could always take these auto tours, and then they'd, you could play their little CD, or a couple of them, you press a button. You know what you do now? You take out your cell phone, and you dial this number. And the first time we did it, we were in Georgia, and the area code was 585. And that's right, we called Rochester, New York to find out what was going on in Georgia. <laughs> the only one that trip that didn't work was the Georgia area code. And I don't know why that happened. I really don't. But anyway, and, and that's great because you can play it over and over again. There's no purchase involved. But however, the CD prices for the auto tours that are still doing it, the prices have been dropped quite significantly. So make sure you have a CD player. Time. How much time do you need doing this? You can run any of these. It's okay. You, you, you can take, it's always going to take more time than, than you think it's going to take. Um, at least if you're a nut like me. Um, use, if you've used AAA guides or, or borrow one from somebody, uh, I found if it says uh, uh, two hours or more, I'm going to lose a good chunk of my day there. Um, it, it, it just happens. There's, there's so much to do. Uh, and some battlegrounds have got really heavy, heavy traffic problems. If we have one of uh, Manassas around, but if you don't, that's OK. Manassas is real close. That, that, this particular one, that's Antietam. That's the sunken road. Cost a lot of lives right there. And that's the way they look. These are the fences, by the way, that uh, I've helped build a lot of in Gettysburg, but they're building them all over. And that second picture, the, the shot on the side, was uh, Burnside's Bridge at Antietam. I can usually know where you are. Uh, Fredericksburg, Chancellorsville, Spotsylvania, the wilderness. Don't be prepared to see too much. The wilderness was a problem, as was Chancellorsville, because the troops had trouble seeing each other. A good 20% of the casualties they figured in both the Battle of Chancellorsville and uh, the Wilderness were caused by friendly fire. The growth is that thick, that tangled. It is so easy to get turned around. Units were always firing into each other. Also, the, one, of the, one of the reasons why uh, Jackson gets mortally wounded there. He's not the only one. So some of these battlefields don't have a lot to see. There's Manassas. Yeah, that's Manassas. Now there's two battles at Manassas, of course. First Manassas, otherwise known as Bull Run, the one that everybody came out and, and sat on the neighboring hill to watch the uh, Union victory, right? That didn't quite happen. Um, that is in a tremendously heavy trafficked corridor. Uh, I was going to go from there one day, because we spent a large part of one day, and I was going to do part of the next, and then go to Theodore Roosevelt Island in the uh, Potomac. The traffic was so bad, I, I canceled uh, the island. You, you just can't get there. Uh, and in order to walk the battlefield, and it's not that big a battlefield, you have to cross 
a couple of very, very busy roads. The National Park Service does not know how to figure out. How Most people get around by, by doing driving tours, which are fine, which are fine, especially if it's your first time. Unless you're absolutely crazy, my daughter who just left, uh, had gone to Gettysburg before I did, and she said, Dad, you got to go. And I said, well, I get all I, my information from books. I, I know how it's going to be. But if we're going to go, then I'm going to use this book. This is, the main title's here on the side, the U.S. Army War College Guide to the Battlefield. You start so far off the battlefield, and you do so many more things, and we have done that. We have done a guided tour. We have done... Uh, you follow the, the stops tour. Uh, we've done bus tour. You can also do it by Segway now. You can do it on horseback. You can do it on bicycle. All of these are rentable. Uh, any amount of way you can do except I, I, I don't think you can be airborne in Gettysburg. And they all have their particular attraction. They really do. How interested are you in it? Is it one you just want to get a bit of a flavor of? How much time do you have? Do it the way you want. National Park Service always, if they're there, if they man it, it's not like that Ball's Bluff thing, they always include a number of freebie tours to a site or an area and help explain the, sometimes the whole battle, sometimes just a part of it. At, uh, at Yorktown, which is primarily a Revolutionary War battlefield, is also a Civil War battlefield. Uh, and you can ask for specific areas. And like I said, in the big ones, you know, you, you want to follow just the Irish, or uh, you just want to do second day, or you know, whatever you want to do, you can ask them. They'll do any of those tours for you. And their prices are not bad. I've done both. Self-guided, of course, are fun. Um, Antietam is an example. And Pam still has some of mine. I, I have about four of these. They have little trails. You don't do the whole battlefield. Here's the final attack trail. Very short, very easy to follow, explains everything along the way that you're going to see when you're there. You don't have a guide, you don't need a guide, you can do this walk. It's not bad. It really isn't. They have four or five of these. They've really rehabilitated Antietam. When I first went, there was a sign, and it said, Woods! And there were all these corn growing there. And then over here it said, Cornfield! Trees. I was very glad when they cut down the trees, moved the corn, and then a few years later I saw Boy Scouts planting all these little trees. They're now bigger than I am, so I can imagine the woods. It's okay. They have the woods where the woods were and the cornfield where the cornfield was. That's, that's just terrific. Uh, and like I said, you can go all these ways. They have tour buses. They have all sorts of stuff. Um, I had some friends who um, liked to camp. If you're a tent camper, lots of luck. If you're any other kind of camper, they can do it. They went with a combined couple families and they had a lot of young kids. And guess what? The campground arranged to have people come, reenact your types, and tell stories to the kids and had them in trance for two, three hours. Not a bad way to go. General things. Um, any monuments, any cannon, any artifacts, don't climb on them. Please don't. But do walk almost everywhere. They got paths everywhere. They're mostly all weather. But unless it says you're on private property, walk anywhere. It gives you a perspective of what the troops actually saw and did. And I think I left one out there on the table, but there's a, a, a nice short walk that everybody can do. It's a two-day thing. The Boy Scouts do it. It's called the Heritage Trail. They do 10 miles on Saturday and 5 on Sunday at Gettysburg, and it doesn't cover the entire field. It has been done. Most Boy Scout groups do it, and they often do it in conjunction with a trip to D.C., and often I found out they're not very well led. I have a doctor friend who's trying to talk me into volunteering for a local scout group to take them because this, the last time this troop went, the, the, the leader made them stop at every monument and plaque and read it, and that is not the way to do. Especially a fluid battlefield like Gettysburg. Here's a plaque or a monument that pertains to day one, 
Right next to it is one that pertains to day three. Different army, different group. Over there is one for day two and three. Now, if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to really confuse people with it. So, and, and every state has multiple Civil War connections. Like I said, there were primary battles in 26 states. However, there are several books out, Civil War topics in 50 states. Well, it's hard for me to imagine what, how, what Hawaii did to get in there, but it's in the book. I didn't bother to look up Hawaii because I don't think I'm going to advise you to go there for Civil War stuff. Um, but here's the deal. A year ago, we were in Vermont. I wanted to see how much destruction Irene did. Well, Irene did a great deal. And I didn't really expect to run into civil war there. But if you go on the extreme eastern edge of Vermont, Vermont? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had my, my geography was a little confused for a second. And you go about one third the way north, there's a little town of Windsor. And Windsor had, and I was just driving through it, and they said, oh, look at this. It has an old factory here. It used to be a, 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 a gun factory, so, and it was open. So, gee, we went in and spent half a day there. It seems there was no major arms manufacturer in the United States, Colt, Remington, anybody who did not go there, help design or expedite designing machine tools that they then took back and made the weapons that they sold to the federal government. Some of the equipment there is still Civil War equipment. It still works. And they have apprentice programs where kids come in and learn to be machinists on some of this historic equipment. And you can watch them do it. And they'll actually make a metal souvenir for you not something you can buy out there. They'll actually make it for you right there to help demonstrate how the machines actually work. So that was a lot of fun doing that. Wheeling, West Virginia, that's not a place you'd expect to do anything there. A woman was very impressed, very chauvinistic about her area, and it used to be such a manufacturing center in the United States, and she started accumulating all these examples of Wheeling, West Virginia made stuff. And after I'd done that, I looked around, and my gosh, you can be in places and even manhole covers. I'm in Wheeling, West Virginia. Ah, Wheeling is on a river the whole bit. Man, they did a lot of stuff. They sent it everywhere. I was amazed at how many Civil War connections there were in this private but decent-sized museum that we were lucky enough to be there that the actual woman in charge who collected all this stuff was there. She's there one or two days a week, and if she's there, she does tours and examples, and uh, she just blows your mind away. The reason I bring this stuff up is in the areas that you're ever in, you never know what you're going to find. It's, it, it, it's phenomenal. We checked out Lowell, Massachusetts. Now, Lowell, Massachusetts, clothing industry, beyond belief. National Park Service has taken over many of these huge buildings has restored and is restoring along with a part of the canal system that used to connect them. Uh, it, it's a period of history that extends before and after the Civil War. Uh, after we talked extensively with the volunteers that were there, I know when I go we're going to have to spend two plus days. Something I would never have expected when I went to Lowell, Massachusetts. I already did the thing on kids. Um, but there's lots of things for kids to do. There's a, a Gettysburg blogger, for example, who had three or four pages of, of, of stuff. If you drive uh, the, the regular tourist drive right near Big Round Top, there are a couple of little bridges that go over streams. And when they were building these bridges out of stone, the big flat stones they used on the top of the walls there have got two fossilized dinosaur footprints. Take a kid to a Civil War site and tell him you're going to go look for dinosaur stuff and he thinks you're completely nuts. When he finds it, that's all he talks about. Uh, this stuff is there and can be found out easily. It's, uh, it's amazing how much information there is. You just fall over it. In Gettysburg, there are always, 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 during the regular tourist season, reenactors. There's a big group over on the Confederate side on Seminary Ridge. That'll hold sometimes hundreds. When we were there uh, last time, there was a 26th North Carolina was there. Scared my grandson into thinking that they shot people with Yankee caps on. And he and his other 
uh, cousin were busy hiding from them around trees until they finally caught on that this was a joke. Uh, these guys are, do real reenactments over there. They live there. They cook there. Uh, behind the Pennsylvania Monument, there's always a demonstration group there. And uh, at the northern end, when you're starting to merge into the town of Gettysburg, uh, in front of one of the museums, there's always a uh, reenactor group there. Always with different stuff. Some of them are military. Some of them are sanitary commission. They are religious groups. Another area to mine in what you're interested in in an area. How did these people get taken care of? One of the more interesting little stories um, about caring for troops, Philadelphia. Go to the main train station in Philadelphia. Philadelphia is the only city in the country that from the beginning of the war to the end of the war never allowed a troop train to go through without stopping and taking care of the boys. Little coffee, little donut, little this, little that, whatever they had time for. Many cities did it. Philly's the only one that did it the entire war. Um, there are passport programs uh, for kids, or you can do it too. You get an actual passport. Every time you're in another national park, they stamp it for you, you know? Um, some of the stuff that they have in here, I, I go back to kids after all. Um, they only have material from ages um, 6 through 12. I say only, not too many people go with kids younger than that, and usually you can, if they're under 6, you can usually find ways to entertain them. You don't need them. Uh, but there are word searches, there are journals, there are puzzles, there are word scrambles, there are scavenger hunts. All this stuff is already there. And then they tell you, well, if you don't like any of this, here's three other sites you can find because there's still other stuff. It is a lot of fun. Walks. Gettysburg, the cyclorama, the most unique thing. It's an art form that, have, that, that bloomed and died very quickly. Uh, it, it came about after the Civil War and uh, died with the motion picture. Large circular buildings were built all over the country. There was a big one in Buffalo. And people would buy season tickets to these things. And I, and I first read that, I went, oh yeah, sure, mm -hmm. I went to the new cyclorama display. If you haven't been in Gettysburg at all, or if you haven't been in a while, that means you haven't been to the new visitor center, which is enormous. And they've totally redone the huge cyclorama. That's the 360 degree painting that you see from a raised platform so that you're not on the ground. That, it, that looks for all the world like it's hung straight, and it is not. That they have built an enormous diorama around the entire base that it's hard for you to tell immediately where the diorama starts and where the picture starts because they just kind of merge. And it is an amazing experience. It's part of your admission to the, uh, to the movie and, and, and the uh, museum. Uh, always do it. If you have more time or are more interested, there are evening programs which triple, quadruple the amount of time you can spend with the painting because like all paintings, it's light sensitive. You don't get a lot of time with it. Those evening programs are the only times you can really get into it. It is of the climactic battle on the third day. It's Pickett's Charge. Buildings are there. Uh, the interpreters will point out mistakes. Uh, there are at least, uh, see if you can find the three phantom soldiers. That's three outlines at a fence that were made that Somebody forgot to paint them in. They're just their outlines there. They're, there they're called the ghost soldiers, and if you can find them, good for you. Um, yeah, all sorts of important people are depicted uh, in that picture. Uh, Gen General Armistead, Meade. Uh, we see Armistead uh, as he's on the Union side, just as he's dying. Um, see all sorts of stuff. It was a Frenchman that came. He's, he did it all. Uh, made the initial sketches and then had this, brought in this industrial sized crew of artists who uh, filled out the painting. Um, it had to be restored, it had to be cut, um, and the old cyclorama building has been torn down. 
the old cyclorama building, as well as the old visitor center sat on Cemetery Hill, the focal point of at least two of the three days of battle there and were intrusive. And so they are now removed and the next restoration will be the restoring of Ziegler's Grove and that whole area with different parking configuration only for the National Cemetery uh, will be uh, make it more uh, realistic to the actual war itself. But that, uh, that cyclorama uh, thing is something else. Uh, and one of the National Park's battlefield guides there, Sue Boardman, who by the way loves cupcakes. If you ever go, bring her a cupcake. Mm -hmm. Um, she's an XRN. She doesn't take a lot of baloney. She's a lot of fun. Uh, she's the one that was primarily involved in doing all the research and assembling the restoration tours. She does most of these evening tours. Um, Non-battlefields. National Park Service information will tell you all sorts of stuff that's near any national park you want to go to. What attractions are there? Where do you stay? Where do you eat? Where do you go? Better yet, Go to their office while it's open, 9 to 5, and whether they're volunteers or not, where do you eat? <laughs> what would you like to do? What happens around here? For example, at Gettysburg, you're there in the fall. You like big country festivals? Go one town north. Go to Biglersville. They have an apple festival. It makes Williamson look like they just discovered the apple tree. Uh, they go all out. It is a huge festival there. You have in the Gettysburg area um, the Carlisle Army College. It has a museum. It has programs open to the public. Most people don't know about it. One of the instructors there who's still active military, uh, is, uh, his last name is Hillebrand. When he shows up for these uh, spring and fall musters, he brings 15 of his nearest and dearest relatives with him. We call it the Hillebrand Brigade when they arrive for these things. And they come from all over eastern United States. Um, prison sites. Go to Elmira. Why was Elmira a prison site in the first place? Why was, before it was a prison site, it was uh, a big assembly point for the Union Army. Why Elmira, of all places, we go? Well, you find out when you get down there that between the canals, which connected the Erie Canal with the Great Lakes, I, I mean, yeah, with the Great Lakes, with the Finger Lakes, and with the only railroads that were through, Elmira then was a natural hub. When the war was winding down, and the Union figured it didn't need many more recruits, they closed down the Elmira Center as an accumulation point for Union troops, and of course, late in the war, the prisoner exchange broke down, so you had a lot more prisoners to house, they moved them up to Elmira. The very first batch of which was involved in a train accident which killed quite a few of the new incoming prisoners. Go to the cemetery there. There's a, a, a very modest cemetery and all the stones look just alike except for one that's out of place and much bigger all by itself. That's the, that's the uh, site of the burial of an ex-slave who lived in Elmira at the time, who took the remains of all the dead Confederate prisoners, cataloged their belongings, contacted the families where he could, noted where they were buried, and held the effects until families came if they would. He is so, so honored by the town, he's the only one to have a, a, a grave site like that, and it was paid for by the town. His home has been was, was almost ready to fall down. The town purchased it, moved it, and is in restoring it right now. There's lots of little stories laying around. Going to Albany for something? Go a little north. Go to Water Valite. What's Water Valite? Water Valite's the last arsenal in the country that makes naval guns. What else do they do? Well, Water Valite was there when the Erie Canal was begun. Water Valite was one of the first arsenals authorized by George Washington when he was president. And it was inland enough because who wanted the British to poach? They too have equipment that dates back to the Civil War. That also still operates. Unfortunately, after 9-11, the security there is ridiculous. But you can still get in. And the last thing that I know of that they made there has nothing to do with the Civil War or anything else. But you remember, it wasn't too many years ago, 
uh, when we were engaged in war, and still are more or less in the Iraq or Iran area, uh, the enemy's leader was allegedly hiding out in this super reinforced deep bunker. Uh, they took, the water of elite took a, uh, a naval gun and converted it into a deep ground penetrating bomb, tested it and delivered it and it was used 32 days after the idea was thought of. So it's still actively working in things and has all sorts of uh, correlations. Cemeteries, cemeteries everywhere. We went to uh, Monocacy. Late in the Civil War, Jubal Early comes up the Shenandoah Valley. His idea is to clear the valley out and if he's successful, keep going and even raid DC. And if that's successful, send down, see if you can get to the nearest uh, prisoner of war camp and, and release them, well, he isn't that successful and he's held up by this battle at Monocacy. Just a little town northwest of DC was an interesting stop. If you want to look at it after, that's fine. The cemetery there, again, was the most interesting darn thing. Um, you just don't know. Talk to social groups, talk to religious groups. They all have connections. Uh, there are connections to the US Sanitary, uh, Sanitary uh, Commission. Uh, ways, ways to tour. Um, you, you know, what do you want to do? You just want to get an overview of what happened there? That's easy to get. They're, they're quite easy to do that. Follow your own units from your own state. Follow ethnic units. Do the monuments themselves. I have a book on the other table in there just on Gettysburg monuments. Nowhere's near extensive because there are way over 2,000 of them. And by the way, vandalism and defacing them also keeps us very busy, which it shouldn't, but it does including uh, two years ago the Peace Monument on Oak Ridge that was dedicated by uh, FDR. That was right after they got rid of the airport that was up there. Um, I had such uh, vile language written on it and it, uh, it was used by paint that was penetrated the stone so much it took them over a year to be able to clean it and restore it. it you can now go there and not know what ever happened. Um, selected uh, Areas of battle, like I say, you get a big one like Gettysburg, I'm only interested in day one. Good, they'll spend as much time as you want on day one. Natural beauty, some of these places are set in unbelievably pretty places, they really are. You can just go there, go in the fall, walk around, you know, it's terrific. Go to Fredericksburg, go to... Then there are other little places, Frederick, Maryland. You wanna know about medicine of the Civil War? They've got a little medical museum there. Knock your socks off. And if only one of the couple wants to do that, the other wants to shop, let me tell you, it's in one of the nicest little shopping areas, little store after little store with all sorts of neat stuff. I can spend a lot of time in Frederick, Maryland. Not to denigrate Fredericksburg, Virginia. Also another great place to be. But if you're going somewhere, let's say you're going on a family trip and you're going to somewhere nowhere's near a Civil War battlefield. Like I said, there were 10,500 of them. Are you sure you're nowhere's near? <laughs> Are you sure you're nowhere's near? You might be, and if you're an absolute idiot, which I know you're not, you get a book like this that actually has them all. And back in here they have one. This is an interesting thing. You can probably see that. Map of the United States section some most counties are green some are white every white one has at least one civil war battle action in it some of them have four five seven ten you gotta be in some pretty strange places not to be near some white area and then like i say there are all the ancillary ones like in vermont who expects to find anything in vermont besides where they held up the bank just across the canadian border but we won't talk about that one um, pluses and minuses about going to these places. Weekends, most of us have. Weekends are obviously the most crowded. Weather, you're going to go there, plan for indoor and outdoor activities. We discovered uh, when we were on the peninsula, again, going back to the Civil War, McClellan's run from Fort Monroe up to Richmond, down in uh, Newport News, it's getting more and more advertised now, but then, boy, if you could find a little sign smaller than this piece of paper that said Mariner's Museum, you were great. 
they have in the Mariner's Museum the turret, the big revolving turret from the monitor. They raised it a little while ago. It's been encrusted in seawater and everything else. They have a complete, and you can look at it as it sits in this water as they slowly use chemicals to decrust it. Uh, they have a full mock-up outside uh, of, of the exact replica of the monitor. You can't go inside, but you can walk all over the outside of it, and you get a real idea for proportion. It is a complete maritime. I mean, you want to go back before the Phoenicians to yesterday. It's there. We happened to arrive on a rainy day 10 minutes after it opened. They were having a special for hire occasion that was being catered that evening, so they didn't throw us out at the normal closing time. And I even ate there, something I never do in museums because they don't have much selection and they cost too much, but I didn't want to waste a minute of the, and we still didn't do that whole museum. There's so much in that area for history people. You can spend a lot of time down there. So plan for the weather, have alternatives. Major observances, oh, last year at Gettysburg, everybody said, boy, you know, you're a member of the, uh, of the Friends. I'm sure you were down for the 4th of July celebration, not on your tintype. <laughs> you think I wanted to pay those rates? or get that jammed, I, no thank you. I worked hard and long on the work days to make it look as best it can, and I don't wanna be there then. You might want to, I have friends who've gone and really enjoyed it, and that's fine. I'm just saying, rates are up, crowds are in, spend a long time. Summer ends earlier in most of the country than it does here. If you're tied to school schedules, so late summer traveling to a lot of these sites don't have a lot of kids because Virginia's in school, North Carolina's in school, South Carolina's in school, Kentucky's in school, Georgia's in school. Isn't that nice? They're not really there. Wonderful. And some battlefields are best seen, unfortunately, if you like warmth, in the winter. Why? Too darn much vegetation now to see anything the way it was then. Take all the leaves off the trees. I know in my neighborhood, there's a house that's set so far back, the only time I see it is in the winter because as soon as the leaves come out, it's going to disappear again. Now it'll fall. I, you cannot see it during the growing season. I, again, I emphasize um, indoor activities. Again, at Gettysburg, because I, I know Gettysburg better than most, um, there's the Rupp House. That Rupp House was there at the time. Uh, it, it's a small museum that has hands-on stuff. Kids can learn how to build with, with, with models. Uh, the fences that we're building out in the thing, there's all sorts of, of things going on there. The Willis House, George Willis House, the man who uh, helped establish the National uh, Cemetery and where Lincoln stayed uh, prior to his giving the Gettysburg Address. Uh, the railroad station itself, which was run down, then taken over by uh, the village of uh, of Gettysburg and has just recently been turned over to the, uh, the National Park Service. It, it, it's going, it is evolving into something that is really interesting. The railroad cut in the battle, there were three cuts uh, that acted like huge trenches or are important in the Battle of Gettysburg, especially the first day. And those cuts were there at the time, but the railroad only went as far as Gettysburg at the time. And in there, among other things, was an interesting demonstration of how they actually make the rails. And we know rails are just solid steel, right? No. One of the little interesting things you find out when you go to these places, and that one was a freebie too, right? Now it's a general information thing. They'll tell you anything about the town, the battle, anything they can. There are a lot of local homes there that are open as museums. Many of these, yeah, they'd like a donation. You don't have to give it though. There is no admission. They're interesting. Uh, Robert E. Lee headquarters building is a small free, it's actually there. I felt sorry for the woman who lived in the other half of it while Robert E. Lee was there because he required her to cook meals for him, which is nice. I'm coming to your house and now you're gonna cook for me. You see, you women just don't know how useless you're becoming. Strangers don't come into your house and demand food anymore and get it. I mean, you know, I don't know what's the matter with you. And now it's just family. Yeah, 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 okay. The Dobbins House is, is, is now a restaurant. Uh, it's, uh, it has a 
fairly expensive one upstairs and has a, uh, a tavern-like thing downstairs filled with all sorts of memorabilia. Uh, and some of it is from the shooting of the movie, uh, Gettysburg, with all sorts of stuff there. Food's good. Um, there were antique stores. You get lousy with it. You, you don't have to buy anything. One of the, as a matter of fact, yeah, um, my sweetheart, um, now I lost her name, the one the, with the cyclorama, uh, she and her husband bought one of these huge antique shops. They don't have any antiques. They just rent out spaces to people who have them. Very fascinating place uh, to walk through. We, we, we killed a very rainy hour in, in Gettysburg there one day. Um, the Lutheran Seminary. Uh, it was there at the battlefield. It was the last stand of First Corps before they collapsed and retreated what was left of them um, to uh, Cemetery Hill has just opened as, a, as, as the area's newest museum. Uh, we were there because uh, we gave money to the founding of it, and so we got the freebie pass in. Uh, and anybody that has young kids, I tell them, don't take them there. It is that realistic. You want to see a realistic view of what it looked like, go there. It's thorough, it's good. You can still take a tour up in the cupola. Cost too much for me to go. On the third floor, they have an almost round room with pictures taken from every opening in the coupon. I figured the picture is just as good. I know what's going on up there. Um, the Wax Museum, which I understand they're taking apart. They are totally restructuring it. They sold all the heads to the historic people, and they're going to feature townies now. Jenny Wade House, if you go uh, there uh, and you're really not into history, they got a nice winery downstairs. Hey. <laughs> We talked about Finger Lakes wines for a long time with the guy down there. And most local churches are also open. And uh, what else do you want to know about going to national parks or to I can show your picture. Civil War parks in general? Yeah, that. Vicksburg, big one. They keep on improving it. They have uh, one of the sunken uh, metal clads there. I haven't been there yet. Uh, that's going to happen pretty soon. That's over here. And there was uh, Vicksburg's Mississippi. So it's going to be down here. Shiloh is here. Of all the, of, of all the National Battlefield Parks, uh, Shiloh is the, oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Harper's Ferry. Uh, Shiloh's the most natural because the land wasn't wanted by anybody then, and it isn't wanted by anybody now. Uh, Walmart, almost put a Walmart at the entrance to the uh, wilderness battlefield last year. They finally were persuaded to back off. The wilderness, one of the few places, oh, this is a good one right here. You see this monument? You see who it's in? There's a gas station immediately behind it. Some battlefield, that's all that's left. You'll find a statue or a plaque in the middle of a parking lot or maybe they'll actually feature it by putting it in a traffic circle. But there's nothing left. A lot of these places are like that. This cemetery could be anywhere. Ah, anybody know where that is? Good. How did you figure that one out? Only says it up on top, big letters, yeah, yeah. Chattanooga is good, um, there's a, but there's a beautiful drive to it. Of course, Lookout Mountain, I mean, yes, it was taken, a battle was fought there. Uh, but there's a ridge that Lookout Mountain's the northern terminus of, and you can take a beautiful scenic drive all along there, and it terminates overlooking the Tennessee River. Franklin and Nashville. Balls Bluff. Yeah, you see what I mean? Now, doesn't that look like a developed place to you? That and a plastic container that holds these little, uh, you know, these little things, that's all you're going to find there. That's, that's about it. Uh, Monocacy. It's a pretty wide river there. It really is. It's Potomac. Fort Monroe. Hold it there a minute. This is about the tail end of that peninsula. And as you're looking at it here, the casement, this is a big moat at the time. And Jeff Davis housed in a casement right about there, right about there. They, later on, they actually converted those into rooms 
for officers. And he didn't spend that much time there. He, they moved him to uh, a, a regular building out of the casement in, in a couple of months. But that's mostly all there. It's massive. That was his room, right? Yeah, that was his room in the casement. That was his bed. That's just about the way it was. It's wonderful, isn't it? Don't you like the whitewash? That's the view from the top of the casement. Fort Donaldson. That's the one that didn't go underwater. Andersonville. What you get to do, the visitor center is now up here. The original wasn't this big. They added on when they overcrowded it by more than 50% of what it was. This was the only water source through here. And of course, around the perimeter, there's a dead zone, you know, if you get into there. Um, and of course, prisoners would, up here on the hill, actually try to dig wells. Water was that short. And you see there's no shade. Uh, so you would try to get your water closest to where it was entering the con confines. And there were sadistic centuries posted here uh, who picked people off trying to do that. How big was Andersonville? How many acres in diameter? Oh, it, it, it's only, I, I don't have that uh, number on the, on the tip of my tongue, but it is, it is ridiculously crowded. There were no buildings, no tents. The stuff, they made them themselves. Uh, and they have recreations of all of this up in one corner. But they have the whole perimeter of it staked out. You really get an idea. And it, it's a fold of land like that and tipped a little like that. And uh, when the water really runs, when they really uh, get it, uh, a good chunk of that part of the picture that was away from you uh, turns real marshy. So uh, no barracks? No barracks, no tents, no nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them dug little holes. They would grab scrap pieces of, uh, of, of wood, uh, spread things over it. Uh, if they had extra, extra uh, clothing or if they were allowed a bedroll, most of the stuff was taken from them when they come in. Remember that in almost all wars, your, your prison guard troops are, are, are your, about your third line troop. You know, they got uniforms and guns. That's about all they got. Appomattox, that is gorgeous. And there's more than one building. There's a whole uh, small... Um, Appomattox Courthouse is a village that never happened. It was planned. That it was invested in. And every time an improvement came, it came close, but not close enough. The main road came close, but not close enough. The railroad came close, but not close enough. Uh, it was a dying community uh, in 1865. Appomattox is there, but Appomattox Courthouse isn't. Yeah, the whole thing is now National Park Service. And I tell you, 34 degrees and a 20 mile an hour wind, it was no fun. Fort Sumter, never rebuilt to its original height, never. Never. It was a brick and mortar fort which, of course, world, uh, Civil War guns uh, made totally obsolete. Uh, the high-velocity shells from Union vessels uh, j just crumbled it to nothing. The, uh, the bombardment by the Confederacy that drove, drove it to surrender was minimal in damage compared to what the Union did to it trying to take Charleston. They never took it from the sea. They took it from the land. Kennesaw Mountain. There's not a lot to see in this picture there. It is the big mountain ridge. There's trails all over it. And near it is one, uh, and we didn't get time to get there. You know about the great railroad chase, right? The Union guys go in and try to get the train. They have in that museum the original general engine. And it is supposed to be a class double A museum of that kind of equipment. Never got there. But Kennesaw Mountain's fun. And let me tell you, the residents really use it. There are runners and people in it all the time. 